it's Shrek. This movie has been watched and rewatched, reviewed and remixed in every which way. I feel from melting it down and dissecting it into memes alone has been it so we have immortalized practically every single scene in this whole movie. So many moments have become repurposed for something that I imagine we all just subconsciously rewatch all of Shrek every year through osmosis alone. So trying to pinpoint what scene I want to break down for this series is almost difficult for all the wrong reasons as I feel like I know most of these scenes too well. So whilst you've seen Ogre Like Onions or The Muffin Man, The Big Wedding or Lord Farquaad's Animated Penis, today we're gonna pull things back to perhaps one of the least memeified scenes in the original. It's when the movie takes itself the most seriously and strikes at the thematic meaning behind this entire movie. At some campsite, up on a cliff looking up at stars, Donkey and Shrek have a late night talk, as Fiona hides away in a little cave corner. That one. That's throwback, the only ogre to ever spit over three wheat fields. As we come down from the stars to look upon our fresh-faced duo boys. The last scene was at this exact same spot, just earlier in the day, hence the cross dissolve. This is the setup for your classic heart to heart. If this wasn't a parody production of your standard fairy tale formula. Of course, it's gonna trek it up a little bit, as our characters pull out constellations. Hey, can you tell my future from these stars? Well, the stars don't tell the future, Donkey. They tell stories. It's weird, especially through the lens of the internet. Shrek is a very memeified character. His online presence is beyond a caricature at this point, so to hear him talking almost philosophically is admittedly giving a little bit of whiplash, but here he is. Talking from a place of maturity and intelligence, he's gonna get all spiritual on us about the tales behind the stars. Look, there's Bloodnut, the flatulent. <laughs> you can guess what he's famous for. <laughs> All right, now I know you're making this up. All right, never mind. It's a fart joke. How very ogre. In every line that he spells, he's parodying the more classical traits you would expect a story to take, given the same circumstances and scenarios that its characters find themselves in. No, look. There he is, and there's the group of hunters running away from his stench. All the while, we have Donkey here looking legit cursed. I don't know if it's because they just have him lying straight along the floor, but like, is this a new model for him? He just looks so weird with his perfectly straight neck. It's like I'm looking at an animatronic, and it, it almost tickles me how much he expresses with his face in this strange pose. See? He's looking over so hard over there. I can't unnotice in this scene anymore. Anyway... Man, that ain't nothing but a bunch of little dots. You know, Donkey, sometimes things are more than they appear. Here it is. The main crux of the point of this movie. It is the whole don't judge a book by its cover routine. Sometimes things are more than they appear. A message that applies to so many aspects of this movie. Fiona is more than just a princess. She is an ogre by night. Cursed thanks to the spell from back when she was young. Lord Farquaad, I still cannot believe they got away with that name, never is quite as tall as you first presume him to be. Donkey speaks, I guess. And of course, Shrek. Always seen as the hideous monster, is in fact a friendly guy once you get right down to the core of him. It's just an offhanded comment at the moment since Shrek is genuinely just concerned about Donkey's lack of vision with the stars, but it comes from a place of mild grievance over how he's been treated in his life. Maybe a heart to heart is occurring here tonight. Maybe not. Hmm? Forget it. Still, the act of lying up at the night sky still puts a mild smile on the big guy's face. Or it's a weird animation thing. We are still dealing with 2001 here. Hey, Shrek. What are we gonna do when we get out of swamp anyway? Uh, our swamp? And now we're watching at this admittedly beautiful angle up at the stars. It's not exactly a compositing first, but how often are there really stargazing scenes? And, and how many of them are able to angle themselves like this by being up on a cliff? This kind of shot feels like it would line up with some lo-fi or vaporwave Simpsons edit overlay on it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, the lines are just adding fuel to the conflict, with Donkey being his usual stupid self and Shrek keeping himself guarded as the solo act in this world. You know, when we threw rescuing the princess and all that stuff. We? Okay, there's no we, there's no our. And so, ruining the artsy moment, we pull way further in Shrek's side as he clarifies our slightly more rude conversation topic. Shrek is in all of this for him and him alone. He's always been a loner type character, and he's continuing to keep his barriers up. 
Occasionally shot reverse shotting to Donkey's mirror composition, looking a little less weird at this angle now. Oblivious and confident. Both pretty neutral in regards to angles, though Shrek takes up way more space on his shots. Probably because he's just big. Or he's more heated about this subject. There's just me and my swamp. And the first thing I'm gonna do is build a 10 foot wall around my land. Oh, uh, <coughs> I didn't realize Shrek's politics were like that. This movie truly transcends time. What even is the best response to that kind of declaration? You cut me deep, Shrek. You cut me real deep just now. Oh, so that's what we all should have said. But yeah, this line I feel is probably one of the weirder lines in the whole movie to me. It's not so much that it's out of character, but it's just not quite the tone that I think Donkey would have by the end of the franchise. It feels very much like an early character design thing. His response to being insulted is a weird neutral one of more just an excuse to use some slang. But whatever. The shot looks nice, blurred background, the warm campfire on one side of Donkey. It's decent. But of course, what is a lot more fitting is Donkey prying at absolutely anything. You know what I think? I think this whole wall thing is just a way to keep somebody out. No. So now the cameras have swapped from neutral to entirely on Donkey's perspective of the scene layout. The camera is posed from the direction that Donkey just was, and Shrek is turned away from us. Even in response, we don't see his face. As Shrek has started closing up on Donkey, he has compositionally closed up on us too. But Donkey's exactly the type of character who's not very good with closed doors. And he'll just continue to pry everything open. Are you hiding something? Never mind, Donkey. Oh, this is another one of those onion things, isn't it? And then Shrek turns away again, away from Donkey and towards us. We're now switching to Shrek's perspective. It won't teach us any new answers, but it will highlight how annoying Donkey is. First, it's a closer up on Shrek as he starts to feel more tense from the brewing interrogation. It's a lot less casual feeling the closer the camera tightens in. And then as he turns back to the night sky again, the thing that gave him some nice solace earlier, we switch to his actual point of view, ready for an upside down invasive donkey head to ruin the very thing that brought joy before. It's the most literal sense of Donkey getting in the way and disrupting Shrek from the peace he has clearly been craving since the very start of the movie. And Shrek is the type of person with a short fuse. These two are the perfect follies to each other's character traits. No, this is one of those drop it and leave it alone things. The camera switching to Donkey's point of view now. Honestly, the camera really is sticking to neutral in tone across the whole scale of this movie, as when it does choose to take sides, so to speak, it then flips sides just as regularly to keep the balance. This is just two juggernaut personalities clashing. We don't need to agree or disagree with either of them. But from this angle, you can really see the glow on Shrek's teeth and his angry eyes right center of the frame. Interesting they left so much headroom for the entire log pillow to be in view. Hmm. Uh, why don't you want to talk about it? Why do you want to talk about it? As everything the two debate about splits into twos. Each sponce gets a response, but whilst Donkey remains pretty calm and just nagging incessantly without any awareness of his boundary stepping, Shrek is clearly getting more emotive as it gets to him. It's a subject that clearly strikes something within him, and he's always had his guard up. Now's the chance to finally peel away a little bit of that shell, and he's afraid to. But he's gonna have to. He is talking to Donkey here. Well, why are you blocking? I'm not blocking. Oh, yes, you are. Camera shots getting faster and faster as this interrogation continues. No matter where Shrek turns, he'll always be approached since he is sleeping just out in the middle of nowhere. And honestly, he will never get that privacy when sleeping ever again. But also, there's some sneaky cutting going on here, as Shrek's turnovers have been getting faster and faster until it is practically entirely cropped out now. Switching us to the first side-on for this argument, the camera has met us in the middle as Shrek somewhat meets with Donkey in the middle too, with a threat. Donkey, I'm warning you. Who are you trying to keep out? Just tell me that, Shrek. Who? As he now finally lifts up from his lie down to rise up against Donkey in direct confrontation. But threatening Donkey never works out, and he keeps pushing. Even as the camera switches to a high angle on Donkey, he doesn't falter always pushing for more of an answer now that he's curious. Lighthearted, slapstick, but aggressively refusing to back down. Until Shrek finally snaps. Who is he keeping out? Everyone, okay? Oh, now we're getting somewhere. 
Shrek has finally burst as we've hit the target of an issue that defines and spoils all of Shrek's life. As he sees it, it is him against the world. And what better way to present it than by this lonely shot of Shrek. And nothing but the stars. Perhaps the only companions he's ever had back at the swamp that haven't bothered him. Maybe that's why he was so pleasant and informed about them earlier. He stargazed at the swamp or something. But yes, this angry shot just looks angrier when you have him staring down at you like this, emblazoned in front of the blaze, and leaning in incredibly closely to the camera. It is confrontation manifest. Yet it comes from a place of weakness and vulnerability. And yet Donkey is unfazed, just happy to make progress. Threats are ineffective. Oh, for the love of Pete! And for this brief moment, our third character contributes to the frame. Fiona is with them after all at this point in time, but she's in hiding since it is nighttime. And the boys are pretty loud out here. It's just a viewing out to see that they're okay, or check for safety reasons. Cascading in shadows so as to only preview what's going on with her, as she onlooks from behind her door over a third of the frame. It lightens the drama as we're no longer in poking distance of Shrek's nose, whilst it also makes for another pretty shot against that perfect full moon for Shrek to storm off in front of. What you got against the whole world anyway? Huh? Look, I'm not the one with the problem, okay? It's the world that seems to have a problem with me. And flipping the Fiona perspective, now she's just a speck in the far distance, and right on time as the boys are both looking outwards to the moon now. Donkey up close to us with more of that firelight as Shrek sits on the edge in front of the super moon. Emblematic for lines like, the world that seems to have a problem with me, and from just that alone we have the crux of Shrek's disgruntlement. It's all about his identity as an ogre and his place in society. We know him as the loner in the middle of a swamp, but perhaps that was the location that was pinned to him rather than the one he chose. Regardless, it's an even more stark composition to set up for your emotional heart-to-heart. -heart. I mean, you know I've had to use it for the thumbnail. And who'd have expected it? In a movie about a big green ogre, what a juxtaposition. But it's the point of the movie. Why shouldn't it go with him? He's still a person like everybody else, with opinions and emotions too. People take one look at me and go, Ah, help, run! A big, stupid, ugly ogre. Shrek's vent here comes from a place of anger. It's a disparity of fairness, and he's the victim, and he has a short fuse for it. He's naturally a mad person, which only contributes more to painting him as that scary monster he would otherwise hope to thwart. But then as the outer layer of anger and confrontation subsides, we then capture the next expression of Shrek's character, more real and to the core this time. <sighs> they judge me before they even know me. That's why I'm better off alone. Kind of painted with the more childish language to be clear to the young ones in the audience. You know, all of us once. But the point is still there. Shrek as the strong, the brave, the scary and the grotesque is vulnerable here for perhaps the first time. It's not that nothing affects him, it's that he puts on a front and responds to a world that has already dictated his place in it. The supermoon, no longer a bright focus to shine optimism out of, but just the darkness of the starry sky and only a hint of that fireplace glow. Shrek's face is lit well, but that's for us to see the sadness all the better as he opens up to us all for the very first time. A new bonding piece for Donkey's friendship to grow from, and a sense of emotional transparency that Fiona can resonate with too, way back at the cave. And with Shrek more exposed than usual, it's time for Donkey to mature up and react, joining him on this artistic moonshot. Shrek may have felt alone all his life, but he's not alone right now. And he has at least one companion right by his side, in this beautiful composition, for once. Ready to hear whatever he wants to say. Or I guess doesn't want to say to. You know what? When we met, I didn't think he was just a big, stupid, ugly ogre. It's not a profound perspective. It's just reusing Shrek's words in a way that proves him wrong, showcasing how Donkey is different to the average person, for he's not scared of him upon contact. It's an excuse for relief on Shrek's part that he doesn't have to hate the entire world, and that there are people who will accept him. There is progress being made in Shrek's life that can be potentially all for the better. And it seems he understands that. Yeah, I know. It's not exactly a big grand thank you, 
but it is a form of gratitude from Shrek. Told in a more reserved way, but he's clearly not as heated as he was before. Whether that's from finally expelling the words or for Donkey's response, the fact of the matter is he's calmed down and he's got company. Bringing us right back to the very start of the scene, looking out to the stars, a little closer as friends than they were before. So, uh, are there any donkeys up there? Well, there's, um, Gabby. As we literally revert back to the age-old conversation of what stories can be seen in the stars. Shrek having something else to explain about, or just make up for fun, whilst Donkey seems back on board again. More stories to hear out of a bunch of little dots, since perhaps, sometimes things are more than they appear. This whole outburst being evidence of that. Though this story still has to have a little bit of banter to it, or reality. The small and annoying. Okay, okay, I see, I see it now, yeah, the big shining one, right there, right? They're right back to their usual roles in this dynamic, a duo of unexpected circumstances basking in the beautiful night sky closer than ever, as Fiona gets to watch the remnants of an emotionally vulnerable aspect of these newbies she only just met. It's something endearing. It's how Shrek does a heart to heart, a little different in the middle there, but the outcome by the end is much the same. That, that, that one there? That's the moon. Oh. And as the camera pulls back, we cross dissolve once again over to daytime for the next day. It was an eventful night, but a good one. Don't linger on the argument part. Shrek scenes have practically everywhere been done to death, and unless I pick a scene that literally has no substance to pick through, I think this is the next best underrated scene to dissect. Once it got started, practically every line started to sound like one of those philosophical lo-fi edits. Take the sound and plug it on top of those two cliff shots and you basically have a whole video there. In fact, if I search Shrek lo-fi right now, I bet I'll hear that uh, judge me before they know me line in there, right? Yeah, exactly, there it is. <laughs> By a guy called Kijugo. That particular line is a minified meme of its own, but so much of the rest of this could do with the lo-fi treatment as well, I imagine. M maybe someone will make it happen one day. Because Shrek memes, oh, they will never end. But this video will. For now, though, my name's been Daz. You didn't really care, and I'll see you in a little bit.